A Viper and an EcoBoost will be transformed into ultimate muscle trucks. Which one has the edge? We'll shake them down for power, braking, handling, and speed. When it comes to trucks, there's no doubt that the pickup is the workhorse of America. But that don't mean we can't have a little fun with it, too. Every now and again, the factories will release a special, high-performance edition of a regular truck. And some time ago, we did a shootout between two of them, the Chevy 454 SS and a first-gen Ford Lightning. And they were each built in two totally different styles. Now, I mean, one's a small block, one's a big block. You got naturally aspirated and one with the turbo. I'd say they're pretty different. So we decided it was time for a little shootout of our own. We were each given the same exact amount of money and told to go out and purchase whatever kind of truck we could dream up. Not to mention the same budget for the build. And user's choice on where you want to spend that money. You can throw it at performance, handling, even styling and appearance. Totally up to you, buddy. And when we're done, we're going to compete in a series of tests to determine which truck is superior. The pickups are waiting, and we can't wait to show you guys what we have picked out. Let's kick it off. When it comes to muscle trucks, well, there are only a few choices. You've got the early 90s Cyclones and Typhoons, first gen Ford Lightnings and the 454 SSs. And then you had the second gen Lightnings and the Silverado SS. But all of those pale in comparison to what I chose. That's right, I found a Viper truck. And today, this still holds the record for the world's fastest production truck. And it gets there with a massive V10 underneath the hood, an automatic transmission, 456 gears out back, and a posi track. Now, all that's pretty awesome, and I don't know what Austin's gonna choose, but I can guarantee you this one thing. It's not gonna be anywhere near as cool as this. <laughs> You're a fool, dude. How's that? Red truck? Ah, oh, so predictable. It's a muscle truck shootout. I figured, why not go big or go home and pick the fastest truck they ever made? I thought it was about us getting trucks and building a muscle truck. Yeah. It's like the big guy at the gym. No, the small guy goes to the gym to get <laughs> big. Well, speaking of small guy, I see you picked about the smallest one you could, an F-150, and I'm guessing Yep, you've got the little cute flower on the door, so that means you've got the V6 underneath the hood. I bet you ain't rocking turbos. Plus, what are you trying to prove anyway? I don't need turbos when I have 8.3 liters and 10 cylinders. Ridiculous. Well, I hope you have some serious upgrades planned for this thing, but we'll get to those later on. How about we start by just seeing how these trucks do bone stock? Let's roll, buddy. Well, keep up if you can. Yeah, funny guy. Yeah. So the truck that I picked for the muscle truck shootout is about as good as you could buy. A 2005 Dodge Ram SRT10. Now, underneath the hood is an 8.3 liter V10, the very same one that was found underneath the hood of the Dodge Viper, which was one of America's greatest sports cars. Yeah, partner, I'm very aware this is the muscle truck build-off slash quasi-shootout. But I'm not one to be told what to do. I don't really like listening to rules and staying inside the lines. And that's why I chose the 2015 Ford F-150 Super Crew Platinum. Four-wheel drive, I might add. Yeah, I'm crazy. I did pick the V6 3.5 liter EcoBoost. It's not about what you start with, it's about where you go and the journey it takes to get there. That's where the fun's at. Now, right away, you can tell that this truck does not mess around. And it was built before the electronic nanny came on board most of the vehicles that you'll find today. My right foot is directly connected with a cable to the throttle body on the front of this engine. So whenever I put my foot down, you're going. There's no delay, no traction control, none of that other stuff that's going to interfere between you and a good time. This bad dude's putting out 365-ish horsepower and uh, about 420 pounds of torque. And that's not too bad considering it's got two turbos and a V6. I mean, I wouldn't really expect much more than that. 
The V10 is backed up by the 48RE, which is a four-speed automatic that's normally only reserved behind the Cummins turbo diesel. So you know this is a strong transmission. And in the back, we've got a Dana 60 axle, one of the strongest ones that Chrysler makes. And it has a Ford 56 ring and pinion gear in it. So you want to talk about Pepe? <laughs> this truck fits the bill. This truck is comfortable, not gonna lie. Nice leather seats, it's got the platinum trim, the wood grain, heated seats, probably massage you. Dual split AC. I mean, all the benefits and features you could ask for in a late model vehicle such as this, it's just nice. And you wanna talk about a decked out truck? This is it right here. Every single option imaginable in 2005 can be found in this luxurious interior. I mean, you've got a CD player with FM radio, six presets, uh, two cup holders in the front, two cup holders in the back, four-speed automatic transmission, nice little computer up top that tells you how poor fuel mileage you're getting, uh, and it has a red push-button starter. Oh, power seats too. So yeah, just about as nice as you want it, this truck has it. I can guarantee you that we have some pretty big plans for these trucks. As far as I'm concerned, the Ram, well, it's getting more of everything. More horsepower, less suspension, it's getting lower. More sound, you know, just about everything that you'd want in a muscle truck. Yeah, we'll tweak the looks a little bit, but for me, that's not important. What's important is what happens when you put your right foot down to the floor. <laughs> As far as kind of improving it, well, more power, obviously. Hello, that's a given. With that comes more torque, hopefully, because we, we're gonna need it. The stats put some nice tires and wheels on it. It's a no-brainer. Just have fun with it. If you can't have fun, what can you? Next, the dyno gives us a baseline. Then, off to the track where the ram flexes its muscles. All right, let's do this. See what she's gonna do. Is it on? Yeah, you don't hear it. <laughs> Sounds like you're sewing a blanket. I know, right? The only way to gauge the performance enhancements of our muscle truck build-off is by getting a baseline first. As far as we know, both the Dodge Viper truck and Austin's F-150 EcoBoost are completely stocked. It's only 350 horsepower, 396 pounds of torque. 350? 350, yeah. That's more than what I thought, honestly. Well, the crazy thing is, these are only rated at 360 at the flywheel. Figure that one out. Uh, honestly, you I sure was you ain't thinking, got any tuning loaded up already or something? Hey, nah, man. No, for real, I was thinking if, it, if we broke 300, that would be good. All right, well, uh, let's do another one to back it up, make sure it's doing what it's doing. Uh, let's see if we can repeat that. So 346 horsepower and 409 pounds of torque. Okay, that's kind of hard to believe considering the baseline specs on these trucks go 365 at the crank and 420 of torque. And normally you expect a little bit of drivetrain loss, sometime around 10 to 15%, depending on the transmission and the rear axle. So I would expect a number in the low 300s. Um, now I kind of looked online and there's a few people getting dyno numbers a little bit all over the place. But here's the thing. This is a used truck. We don't know the history on it. The only thing I can think of is maybe it has a tune on it. I don't know. Yeah, we didn't plug anything in to find out. Uh, but for our purposes, this is a good baseline pull for what the truck is right now as it sits before we do anything to it. All right, well, uh, let's swap them out and see what the little, uh, little red wagon will do. Yeah. So I don't know what this is gonna make, but I guess as long as it makes more than uh, 350, I'll be okay. Pretty much guaranteed it will. Four hundred thirty-four on the horse and four eighty-five. Not bad. Four thirty forty-five. Beautiful. Four hundred thirty-six on the horse and four seventy-seven on the torque. So we dropped a little on the torque, but very consistent on horsepower. I like the sound of that. With two consistent runs each, we can move on to more baseline testing. Whatever you got. 
Not bad for a little red wagon, huh? No. Let's go, baby. We're at NCM Motorsports Park to get a feel for the speed, handling, and braking before we tear these trucks down for the buildup. All right, we're going to start this off with a little slalom run. Uh, not really scientific here. We just kind of paced out the cones. Maybe he's thinking to himself, what have I got myself into? Not really good. <laughs> I think we hit one cone, but hey. Let's see what he thinks. It looked like it kind of rolled a little bit. What do you think suspension-wise? It, it kind of looked like it was leaning over. Well, I mean, obviously the driver's full of skill, but the truck <laughs> could use some handling help. You are operating this finely tuned machine at its <laughs> limit of performance. Yeah. All right, that's enough. Let's switch. <laughs> it's hard to see the far side of the truck. Oh, that steering is stiff, man. Nice squeaky brakes you got there. Hey, that's just a sign of high performance, right? Dude, clean run. Looks like it's handling pretty well. I mean, you still got some body roll, but you're pretty tight to the cones. We don't really have them spaced out far enough to get on throttle too much, but. I would say rough comparison wise, just by looking, I mean, this is not scientific or measured. It looks like this truck is handling it a little bit better than the F-150, but. Yes, I would agree. That being said, you still gotta work it. Like this, I think the hydraulic power steering pump's a little low or, or something. Yeah. I've got to hustle that wheel back and forth, but yeah. um, this thing is spunky. Automatically, though, you're lower, you got wider tires. I figured it would have handled better. It's not really a surprise, you know? Well, uh, what's next? Maybe a braking test? Yeah, let's do brakes. All right, let's rearrange the cones. Next, I believe LT truly wants a set of slicks on this thing. Now, LT came clean that he stacked the deck in his favor with what some call the most powerful factory truck ever. But it's not about what you start with, it's about where you end up. I guess that's true, but today is about establishing a baseline for our <laughs> muscle truck's build up so we can rate and score our improvements. Our only rule is that we're tied to a 15 grand budget. Here we go. Right now, we're testing braking from a 60 mile an hour run at start. <laughs> So, there's one thing you may not know, but I probably have a pretty good advantage here because this truck actually comes from the factory with 15-inch rotors up front. No, they're quite large. <laughs> I saw that. We'll go ahead and record the best of two runs. Woohoo! Yeah! Not bad, almost the same, just a couple feet shorter. Well, I don't really know how the truck did at first because got nothing to compare it to, so we'll find out here in a second. But what I do know is when you throw the anchor out, it actually stops in a hurry. It kind of throws you ahead. So uh, I'm impressed. I'm impressed with my truck. I don't know about this one. Oh, no way. Uh-uh, no. That was not 60. Dude, the last time I looked down, it was at 59 miles an hour. 59. That's, that's actually really good. All right, so here's the problem with my truck. It's wearing a 245 5022, which is a taller tire than it came with from the factory. You're already making excuses. No, no, just hold on. I just did one run. This is math, just hold on. Hear me out for a second, okay? It's supposed to have a 245 40 on it. Now, because the tire's bigger, the speedometer is actually going to be reading slower. So when I'm going 60 on the speedometer, it's actually going much faster. So sure. why don't you ramp it up to about 65, if you can get there and see if it evens things out. Yeah, yeah. Physics, math, I don't even get it. Austin's second run was pretty consistent. A tape measure will record stopping distance for both that we'll reference later on. So this next test is not exactly scientific, but it's something that we like to do to rate all the project trucks that we do, and that is burning out for distance. The rolling burnout. Rules are simple. Roll the truck up, put the back tires on the white line, Sit there, power brake it, get them spinning as fast as you can, as long as you want to. As soon as you let off the brake, see how far you go till the wheels stop turning. All right, well, you got the newer truck, so why don't you go first? It only makes sense. Oh, eh? and by the way, if you don't spin both tires, you get half the points. Ah, that's not fair. That is not fair. Now, the way a man does a burnout tells a lot about the character of that man. 
If he just sits there and spins and spins and spins and tries to make a smoke show, that's how you can tell he's compensating for something. But the real truth lies with how long those marks are. And his, uh, I don't think they're gonna measure up. It's not bad. Hey, we got two tires turning. I'm actually impressed because I'm pretty sure that's an open differential, but uh, let's figure out where these stop. Now, normally for our uh, official burnout distance, we kind of go by where you start to see the individual parts of the tread. Um, I think we're over here, buddy. You think you're over here? I mean, you gotta it, give me some credit. It gets pretty light, yeah, well, uh, yeah. You can't see it from here on out, All right. so. That's Austin's mark. Yeah, dude, two tires turning. That's it no took bad. me a while for it to settle in a gear it liked yeah. and get those tires spinning fast, right. but uh, hey, it didn't suck. Let me tell you this, and this is me being honest, that did a lot better than I thought it would. Me too. I don't think it's gonna beat the SRT, <laughs> but it did pretty good. Just to the floor, that's all she's got. Oh, we got this in the bag. Yeah, steer it out. Woohoo! Yeah, kind of not really fair. I'm not giving you any more than this, though. Not surprised by the results. That's I'm fair. just not pleased, really. Okay, you know? so just judging based off of an estimate here, that's like one, two, that's four times what you did. But hang on, dude. I caught another gear. I got at least another 15 feet. I'm just seeing that. All right, so three Look, and three quarters times It stopped, yours. it shifted, more burnouts. So I got 15 more feet. Okay. Easy. That's fair. I'll give you that. <laughs> yeah. That's why you want a muscle truck, not a grandpa truck. It's for doing this kind of stuff right here. Let me remind you, it's not about what we start out <laughs> with. It's about where we oh, end up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You What's know? next? I don't know. Let's find something else to do. That was fun. Look at this. Go, next. Go. Over to the technical course for speed laps. All right, we finally got this dude out on the track. And uh, it's obviously not where it belongs. After all, it's a four-wheel drive F-150. It's a pickup truck. For a stock truck, I'm actually impressed with my first little bit here out on the track. I'm certainly not pushing it to the limit yet, but it just, it feels pretty flat. It's not body rolling too much. You just have to put light pressure on the brakes and it'll slow down. I gotta say, even though it don't sound cool, it's still, you know, it handles quite well. It really does. The tires, you can kind of hear them scream in a little bit. They give you plenty of warning before they're about to let go. It's just all about having fun. So I guess we can't come to a road course without actually doing a couple of timed laps. So uh, let's just kind of let it all hang out. Have some fun. See Good what to go. lap time is. On you, baby. Three, two, one, go. Luck, buddy. So, Austin's truck. I actually am kind of impressed with it so far. It seems like it's doing pretty good for having a small turbocharged V6 engine. I know people give them a hard time for having such a little engine, but those two turbos on there, they're very responsive and they're very torque. I honestly can't wait to see what he pulls out to modify this truck to make it a little bit better. Now, he is at a clear horsepower disadvantage now, but that's okay because knowing what I know about trucks is you can easily make up that difference in power. Handling, I guess we'll have to see what he comes up with. He may decide to lower it. I don't know, he may decide to lift it. It's hard to say. But, uh, well, time's a ticking away. Let's see how he does. And time. So I told you ahead of time what was kind of a good range of some of the other trucks that we've brought up here, what right? What, what, did, what did I say? I don't know, like two minutes. No. <laughs> okay, so some of the last trucks we've had here, anywhere between like a minute 11 and a minute 19. You're killing me, Smalls, what I get? <laughs> pretty good, 116. Oh, dude, that's average. Yeah, I no, think. so you're doing pretty good. Um, so that means I've got my work cut out for me in that Ram. Um, but I don't know, maybe I can match this time, we'll yeah, see. Yeah, a few corners were a little loose, but uh, we kept it in there. So I know this truck's got the muscle to beat that F-150, but I don't, I'll be honest, I don't know if I have the skills to do it, but uh, Oh, we'll yeah, see. me either. I know the truck definitely has the skills, <laughs> so we'll see what happens. There's, There's a lot of power to wrangle here. All right, three, two, one, go. Well, he started off right, threshold braking. That means you run that car or that truck right up to the apex as far as you can, 
Get on those brakes as hard as you can right before you lose traction. That's threshold braking, throttle out, hammer down to the next turn. The truck, way better setup than what I got in the F-150. It's got bigger brakes, bigger tires that are wider. That means you got more traction. Those front tires are gonna bite when he turns. It's not gonna wanna slide out. Might wanna push just a little, but not too much. And uh, he's lower. And I don't think his truck has near the body roll that mine got, so probably do better overall. What's he gonna have? What's he gonna have? Ah, oh, man. I think he got me. Man, I couldn't tell you if that was fast or slow. Fast truck, huh? Not a fast driver. How'd I do? Come on. 109. 109? <laughs> Dang. 500 Ooh. horse, dude. What do you expect? Well, here's the thing. I know this truck, if you put a pro driver behind the seat, could be a lot faster, but... Uh... But you hit that apex in that second turn right on, I bet. Because that's where the biggest time gap is. Yeah, there's there's a lot there. But I you know was what? way off when I got into that. There's only one way to officially close out the day. Burnout. Burnouts. I'm down. Two trucks purchased, both put through the ring. And today, our muscle truck build-off begins. It's Raging Cajun's Platinum F-150 versus Lobster Boy's 05 SRT-10. We could tell early on with our testing out at the track that neither one of these trucks is going to handle all that good in its stock condition. So we're going to start out by bringing the center of gravity a little bit closer to the ground. We're going to lower these trucks. And to make that happen, Summit Racing sent us over each lowering kit. For the F-150, the front is going to get dropped three inches with this strut and coilover assembly. In the rear, that'll get taken care of with an axle flip kit. Not to mention, we're going to add a heavy duty sway bar. So these trucks didn't even come with that from the factory. That'll just eliminate all my body roll. I think my favorite part is the pre-assembled strut because even an amateur can install it. Smart thinking. I'll be done before you even start. Now, to get the ram closer to the ground, it's gonna be lowered two inches in the front and four and a half inches in the rear. Shorter coil spring and a flip kit and longer shackle combination. We'll show you more on that later. But we're also gonna freshen up the ride with a new set of shocks and to keep that rear axle under control, a set of Caltrack traction bars. And since I, you're already on the lift, I'll take the working man's truck and the working man, and we'll go handle mine on a set of jack stands. Oh, you're so gracious. Seems appropriate. What a nice guy. What's the story, man? You gave me this high and mighty speech about having to use a floor jack, and you've got a portable lift? Yeah, well, I mean, I went and looked for the floor jack, in all fairness, and I saw that, and I'm like, yeah, try it out. It looks easy. Man, you got such a hard life. I don't Dude, know how you Dude, I still got, cope. like, I don't know, six jack stands under there or something. It works. Whenever you're working with heavy chassis parts like an axle, you don't want to drop them. And that's where a pair of axle stands come in handy. The rear suspension on both of our muscle trucks is a leaf spring design, and we're going to start the lowering process the same way on each truck with a flip kit. Now, basically, we're going to be moving the axle from the bottom of the spring pack to the top, and it's going to be mounted in a saddle that's provided with each kit. Now, that'll start off with six inches of drop, but that's a little bit too much for this truck because the front's only going down two, and it would bottom out on the frame even if I took the bump stop off. So we need a way to raise the rear end of the truck back up just a little bit. And on this truck, we're gonna accomplish that with a longer shackle. Now, typically for most trucks, this would actually lower the rear end even more. But on this generation of Ram, it'll actually lift it. 
And that's because the stock rear shackle is actually mounted upside down from the way most trucks do it. And that's going to push the back end of the leaf spring further away from the frame, which will lift it back up an inch and a half, which is exactly where we want it to be. Now, I could take the spring off, flip it underneath the axle, and bolt it all back together, and the drop portion of the install would be done. But we're also going to be installing some cow tracks at the same time, and that requires a small aluminum sleeve to be installed in the front of the spring pack. Now, that's not a job I want to do with the spring still on the truck, so I'm going to take it off the truck and head over to the press. All right, so the first thing you're going to notice with this old F-150 is that this rear spring hanger is actually coming from the bottom. So that shackle's sitting right on top. Unlike the Viper truck where it hangers up top and the shackle's hanging, kind of floating down with the spring. So the main difference with this kit is that they give you a shorter shackle to allow for the proper travel. But up front, they give you a drop spring hanger. This will mount in the original hanger location. Your spring will mount right up here, drop it down, give you the travel you need. Freedom. And the last little part of teardown, all we got to do is swap these center pans. That axle is going to sit on top, lock it in place. Don't even have to take the whole leaf pack apart. Clamp it down and just swap them one at a time. In order to get the cow tracks installed on the Viper truck, I've got to remove this pressed in rubber bushing from the front of the spring pack and it's going to get replaced with a solid aluminum sleeve. Now these rubber bushings are held very firmly in place and my go-to tool has always been the shop press, but you guys give me a hard time and I get it. Not everybody has something like this in their home shop. So I'm going to show you a way to do the job with something that's a little more attainable. This is the new Matco Tools Long Barrel Air Hammer and this thing lays down 2300 impacts per minute. And that means it'll move a ton of metal in a hurry. Its power is delivered with a three and three quarter inch stroke, and the forward drip design allows you to easily control the chisel on the workpiece. And as a plus, the rubber dampener reduces hand fatigue. The chuck design allows for quick and easy bit swaps, and in no time at all, the bushing walks right out. So the one thing you do not want to do is drive this aluminum sleeve back in with an air hammer or even a regular hammer, because it will mess it up. Slow and steady wins the race here. A little bit of anti-seize on the bushing will help it slide right in and prevent any galling. Man, get that thing out of here. I don't need a bed step. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, man. I wouldn't do that to you. They're hideous and they're heavy. But it looks like you're almost done, actually. Yeah, got the driver's side wrapped up and almost done with the passenger. How about you? Sweet. I'm in assembly mode, too. Slap some springs on. Moving to the front, baby. All right, well, get back to it and take your step with you. Uh, I guess. Get out of my way. I'll sell it on eBay or something. Next, two different styles of drop kits. So I've got the leaf spring in place and the axle sitting on top in its new home. And the part that's going to locate the two together is called an axle saddle. It indexes onto the spring perch, which is on top, and there's a hole which centers it in the leaf spring centering pin. Now, on this particular style of kit, that hole is drilled off center, which pushes the axle a little bit further towards the rear of the truck. Now, that's to compensate for the different angle of the drive shaft. Now, underneath the axle, there's going to be this new spring plate, and that's what the U-bolts are going to attach to to hold everything together. And as you can see, it too has a hole that is drilled off center. But we're actually not using this because we're running cow tracks. The traction bar kit actually comes with its own lower spring plate and it has a hole drilled in it. But the problem is, well, the cow tracks were designed for a flip kit that centers the rear axle and I need to make a new hole. Now, as you can see, it's just a little bit off centered, but if I were to drill straight through, it would kind of be a weird oblong oval shaped hole, which might not properly locate the axle. So let me show you how I'm going to fix it. I'm going to start by grinding the powder coat from the top and inside of the hole. And then I'll fire up the Forney welder. In no time flat, the hole is filled in. A 
And with it ground smooth, I'll use a drill press to install a new hole in the correct position, about a half an inch off center. Back at the truck, the saddle goes in place, and the axle is lowered in position, followed by the U-bolts. Now the lower mount gets attached with four nuts. The bar installs on the front pivot, and then the lower rear axle mount. The flip kit comes with a lower shock extender, which gets bolted into place, followed by the shock. And the bump stop wraps up the rear. I'm going to crank off the rear by shoving this old spring pack under there and bolt up this drop hanger in the meantime. Now we use my little self under here. Get this guy in place. All about time. Snug her up good later. Want to get all the weight of the truck on before we really cinch it down. Let it settle in place. Now, if you notice, this kit uses some square U-bolts and this little tab that kind of holds it in place. And it really can't go nowhere the way it's designed. But when I sit down on the other side, I notice it did move a little bit. So uh, just for like peace of mind, I'm going to burn it in. Easy, quick fix. Be in business. I went ahead and clamped down the U-bolt plate just to make sure it stays put right where I want it. Now on the OF-150 to give you a little wedge here, a three degree aluminum shim and that'll just locate the pinion angle right where it needs to be so uh, drivetrain's all nice and happy. Then I'm gonna be in some kind of awkward little contortionist position and make this all work. Drop it like it's hot. Now you know when you start seeing shiny parts like shocks, we're pretty much wrapped up. Off to the front. While Austin was taking care of the rear end of the F-150, I went ahead and knocked out the driver's side front suspension of the SRT-10. Now this bad boy has 70,000 miles on it and it's 15 years old. So I figured this would be the perfect opportunity to go ahead and rebuild some of the wear items in the front suspension. So I went to rockauto.com and picked up a few goodies. Now they have several different grades from economy to daily driver and to my choice, heavy duty. I grabbed a new upper control arm for each side that has new bushings and ball joints already installed so we don't have to mess around. A new outer tie rod end, a new lower ball joint, and a new wheel hub and bearing assembly that comes preloaded with wheel studs and an ABS speed sensor that'll plug right in. And to top it all off, grab a new sway bar end link. Now that'll completely refresh the front end and restore the handling back to factory conditions. And the new lower center of gravity will improve handling. My suspension job is three quarters done, so I'll wrap it up on the passenger side front. Later on, two on the ground leads to one question. How much tread can we share? We're kicking off a new set of projects here on Truck Tech, and it's a battle of the brands. Austin and I have each picked a truck of our choice, and we're competing in a series of tests, which includes braking, acceleration, handling, and of course, horsepower. Austin went with a 2015 Ford F-150 powered by the 3.5 liter EcoBoost. And I chose a 2005 Dodge Ram SRT10, which has the legendary 8.3 liter V10 under the hood. We've each been given the same parts budget of 15 grand to modify the trucks to our liking. And we're kicking things off in the chassis and suspension department. We just wrapped up the rear of both trucks and now we're getting started on the front. Now, we've told you this before, but it bears repeating because it is a matter of personal safety. Anytime you're working with a compressed coil spring, you want to make sure you slowly release the tension because 
if you pop this upper ball joint, this thing could fly through there and it would probably go right through the side of this door like Wiley e. Coyote through a brick wall. And if that happened, Austin over there would probably use it as some excuse for a reason why his truck is slower. We can't have that, can we? You know I could hear you, right? <laughs> Tin can. So instead of just popping the ball joint, we're going to use this hydraulic transmission jack. All I'm going to do is pump it up and put a little bit of pressure on the coil spring. And that way I can safely pop the upper ball joint. Then I'll pop the lower ball joint, pull the knuckle off, just like hanging a picture on the wall, and the spring can safely come out. There we go. Oh, off to the press with you. You know, Austin, I hate to point this out, but earlier you were making a lot of claims about how easy your install was going to go and how it's going to be done first, but I can't help but notice your strut is still sitting on the ground. What gives? I'm literally almost done. I have one part to swap out. Five bolts. All I got to do is drop the spindle and this guy come right out. You know, I hope you maintain that same positive almost attitude when we find out your truck is almost as fast as mine. Always positive, buddy. All right, well, my suspension is done, so I'm headed out back to tear apart that rear axle and uh, what do you got left to do? Just well, the front? I don't know, but I'll finish up if you quit talking to me and go do something else. <laughs> All right, get to it. <laughs> Multitasking right there. That is fine. There we go. Next, smoke them if you got them. Getting your power down to the ground is important in any high performance application, whether you drive a muscle car or a muscle truck. So we each picked out a few different parts to go in the rear differentials of each of our pickups. I gotta say, dude, the first time I did a gear swap, I was probably 15 or 16 years old. Ironically, it was on an F-150 and I, yeah, I was a bit skeptical. I mean, there's a lot of parts, it costs a lot of money, but uh, it's not that bad of a job if you just follow the simple steps and go through it. And I see we are taking two completely different paths on this. Well, you got that right. My truck came from the factory with a clutch style limited slip differential. And this thing puts power down to both rear wheels and it'll do burnouts all day long. So I've really got no reason to change this out. However, it does come with a 456 to one ring and pinion gear set, which does a couple different things I don't like. Number one, it limits my top speed to only 147 miles so... an hour. Number two, it gives the RPM when I'm cruising down the highway just a little bit higher range than I'd like it to be at, which causes it to drink just a little bit too much fuel. It's a gas guzzler for sure. We're rocking about 11 miles <laughs> to the gallon. So I went to Summit Racing and I'm going to swap it out with a 430 to 1 ring and pinion gear set. And I also picked up a master install kit, which comes with all the bearings, shims and seals I need to complete the installation. Now these 430s are going to do a couple different things for me. Number one, it'll give me a much higher top speed. Number two, it'll lower the RPM when I'm cruising down the highway, which maybe will improve my fuel mileage a little bit. Can't hurt. That's and number sure. three, this thing makes so much power anyway, it's really not going to hurt my acceleration. But I noticed you don't have any gears over there, so uh, what are you doing? I'm rocking the Detroit True Track. This is my go to pick. It's got the helical gear style limited slip differential. And that's going to ensure that I got two tires turning in just about any situation. Best part is no extra oil additives. And it's uh, maintenance free. You slap it in, it's quick and easy, not a problem. So if you're not re-gearing it, uh, what ratio does the truck have? So stock, this old boy comes with 355 gears, Ooh. which does not sound good, but you gotta remember, we got the six speed automatic transmission. So with a first gear ratio of 417 to one, it actually turns out into a pretty nice drivable gear. I mean, it's acceptable for me, I'm rocking. I mean, it'll get that baby V6 off the line with, you know, a little enthusiasm. Uh, what about install time? I guess that's pretty simple, huh? Simple and easy, dude. New bearings, new races on the rear diff. Swap over a ring gear, not even pulling a pinion. So all you got to do is set the backlash. This is a full gear setup, pinion depth and backlash. Takes a little bit longer, but that's all right, because when we're done, 
both of these trucks are going to be a lot more fun to drive, a lot more usable, and maybe you'll be able to do a decent burnout. <laughs> Guaranteed. Time will tell, huh? By lowering both of our trucks, we've improved how they look and how they'll handle. So to test that out in a not so scientific way, we've come out to a big empty parking lot to have some fun. You know, I've heard some people think that we do too many burnouts. <laughs> Is that even a thing, dude? Last time you had the F-150 out, you were only spinning one tire, and that doesn't look very God, good at all. It was so embarrassing. It didn't even want to do the slightest bit of burnout. We should actually be able to get both tires hooked up today. All so. right, so here's the story. This is a burnout contest for tread depth. My truck right now is about 830 seconds on the back tire, and whoever can destroy the most rubber in 60 seconds is going to be declared the winner. Where are you at? 930 seconds. All right, well, let's get to it. All right, you hit it first. Never gets old. Now, I did consider taking it easy and only using about half throttle just to make Austin feel better. But at the end of the day, I've got 500 horsepower in a V10, so I've got to let it all hang out. Anybody seen a tire store around here? Four, three, two, one, shut them down. Now, I really don't know what to say other than that was a blast. Yeah, we're down to zero 30 seconds. No, we can still take some measurements on that. No, that doesn't count. We, <laughs> we measured in the middle. All right, you're up. I got to give Austin a little bit of credit. He is working at a horsepower disadvantage, but he's still putting on a pretty decent show. For a Ford, that is. Come on, man, Trent. Let's go, baby. This thing sucks. I think we still got a little work to do. Just a little bit. After all the dust has settled and the smoke is cleared, a quick inspection of the tread depth shows this wasn't really that much of a contest. What's the story with that F-150? <laughs> dude, electronics and the new trucks cannot keep this dude in a burnout for the life of me. No matter what I do, still got some work to do, man. Well, that's all right. The point of coming out here is to test the posi, which we know that works great. And we now have two great looking trucks that are sitting a little bit closer to the ground. But remember, this is a shootout, which we're measuring with dollars. So how much did you spend? 1,890 bucks all in so far. Wow. Um, suspension and uh, true track. I'm a little bit more than that. I think mainly because I put traction bars on, had a master rebuild kit and ring and pinion, $2,494. If you guys want any more information on any of these trucks or how to do a burnout, you can contact me directly. Otherwise, visit us at PowerNationTV.com. Catch you next time on Truck Tech. <laughs> Bigger turbos, hotter can. Just a few of many performance goodies in store for our muscle trucks. The build-off kicks into high gear right now on Truck Tech. We've got a great looking pair of trucks in the shop today, which means it's time to make progress on our muscle truck shootout. And the concept is simple. We were each given the same budget to go out and purchase whatever kind of pickup truck that we wanted. And then we were given the same budget to modify them in whichever way we chose. Now, obviously we're comparing apples to oranges here, but it doesn't really matter because they're gonna be judged in a few different categories. That'll include style, appearance, performance, and obviously just which one you'd rather have in your garage. But it's all about how competitive we could actually make them and just have fun with it. So naturally, the truck that I chose is the 2005 Dodge Ram SRT10 Quad Cab. This thing comes with an 8.3 liter V10 under the hood. It puts down 505 horsepower, and I mean, just look at it. It's probably one of the best looking pickups ever to roll off the assembly line. And I picked the 2015 Ford F-150. And this is rocking the 3.5 liter EcoBoost, so obviously we're gonna need to throw some muscle at it. 
Now, so far we went ahead and lowered it, three inches in the front, four in the rear, added a rear sway bar that'll tighten up that body roll, and lastly, put a true track that'll give us some good track. The Ram got more or less the same treatment. We lowered it three inches in the front and five inches in the rear. Now the difference is, I completely rebuilt my front suspension to kind of tighten up the handling, and out back, I re-geared the axle to a 430. Now, since we are sticking to a budget, why don't you tell them what we spent so far? For the F-150, the Detroit True Track Limited Slip ate $539 out of my budget. Lowering kit and high performance window tint gave me a grand total of $2,065 spent with just under $13,000 left in the bank. On the Ram, I spent $721 on re-gearing and the fluids for the rear end. $788 on the lowering kit and traction bars, and another $985 on suspension rebuild parts for a grand total of $2,494, which means I've got a healthy $12,506 left to spend. Today, we're both under the hood with high-performance enhancements that'll get our power numbers up. For starters, bigger turbos mean more power, along with a larger intercooler, injectors, and blow-off valve to relieve boost pressure when the throttle is closed. A fuel pump voltage booster will add more fuel delivery, and lastly, a cold air kit and oil separator that will keep oil vapors out of the engine. And since the Viper truck is already off to a great start with 8.3 liters and 10 cylinders, I'll be increasing the power primarily with airflow upgrades, like a larger cam and updated lifters, a pair of long tube headers, and a full 3-inch exhaust from Magnaflow. Plus, I'll round out the upgrades with some new hotter ignition coils and plug wires. Everything you see here, we got from summitracing.com. So I am very interested to see how well these two trucks are gonna stack up to one another when we're all done. Because we're basically playing to the strengths that each truck already has. We've got a large, naturally aspirated engine versus a smaller, forced induction one. And thankfully, this guy is not installing any turbos to give a fella a fighting chance, you know? I'm going easy on you this time. Yeah, I'll get you two more jack stands, buddy. Before I get to the engine work, I need to get the wheels off the truck because I have something planned for later which will improve the looks and handling of the SRT, since the tires that came on the truck are pretty well used up. So, basically doing a cam swap and a lifter change, I need to get the cylinder heads off, intake manifold, the exhaust manifolds, and to get the cam out because it's so long, I need to get all this cooling stuff out of the way. So, that's my first order of business. It's time for the coolant to be drained out, and by using the drain valve, instead of disconnecting the lower hose, the floors are kept much cleaner. You know, the one thing a lot of people don't think about when they're working on engines, especially large ones like, I don't know, 8.3 liters, is how much coolant actually has to flow through the engine to keep this thing at normal operating conditions. I mean, if you're used to working on like Honda Civics or even like a small Chevy LS engine, the upper radiator hose is pretty small, but this guy, it's gonna be two inches or larger, that's massive. The upper core support bar is next. And with a little help, the cooling package can be removed from the truck, giving plenty of access to the front of the engine. Well, yeah, for some reason they decided to put a hydraulic cooling fan on the front of this. Uh, tip your hand up a little bit. So there's about 42 different connections you gotta undo. All right, there we go. With all the performance mods we're going to throw at this little EcoBoost, it just makes sense to totally disassemble everything, get it out of the way before we start throwing new parts at it. Now we'll have to get to that intake manifold because we're going to put some new fuel injectors, probably throw some new spark plugs, and then lastly these turbos at the bottom might be a little difficult to get to. Probably put the truck up on the lift, remove these inner fender wells, and hopefully make the job a little easier. Now, I'll be the first to admit, you give me some wire harness plastic connectors, I'm probably going to break every one of them. But after being careful, slowly taking them apart, and all the hoses out of the way, we can actually access this intake manifold. I'm going to grab a blowgun, blow all this debris and dust off. Something so simple eliminate problems such as if anything falls in there, well, you don't want that going in your turbos. I'll jack them up pretty good. Us. You 
You might be wondering why I'm draining some coolant lines, but these turbos are actually oil and water cooled. So, got to drain the system, flush it out. Coming up, surprises inside the V10. Account for the budget. With the front cover off the engine, we finally have access to the timing chain in the camshaft, which is basically what we're trying to get at. Now, on some engines, you can actually just remove the rocker arms and spin the camshaft around a couple times, and the lifters will pop up in their retainers, and they'll stay there so you can remove the camshaft without tearing down the engine further. However, we're actually going to be swapping out our lifters for a slow bleed style, which will work better with our high lift camshaft and the stiffer valve springs. Now, to get to the lifters and replace them, we've got to remove the cylinder head, which means the intake, the rest of the valve train, and the exhaust all has to come off. Well, been making some good progress on the teardown, and we have the top side completely disassembled, ready to throw in some new parts. But we didn't get there yet. Obviously, just to get to the fuel injectors, had to get to these fuel rails and get them out of the way. And it was not an easy task. That wire and harness goes and wraps all around it. So tight, couldn't even really get a camera in there to show you. But for the bottom, all we really got to do is remove this Santa cooler, pop some bolts off, and then for the fun stuff, turbo time, get them old rusty bolts off. Yanking the stock intercooler out, because it'll be replaced with one that's able to handle the increased airflow. There we go. Baby intercooler. Tubes, tubes. More dudes. So where's the little hamster wheel go? Somewhere on top there? Uh, you're a character. So how's it going? What you what you got going on? Uh, it's going, man. Um, everything pretty much ripped off. About to yank some turbos from the side. Just gonna do the rest of this piping. You know, it just it blows my mind how little those turbos are. But like that's where these get their response from. You know, it's just instant spool up. Um, so you get your injectors out. What's what's the first thing you're putting in? Uh, slap some injectors back in, get this top end buttoned up so no debris or nothing gets in there. And, and you know, it's just, it makes me sad though, because you're putting in all this effort and you could have had a V8. Coulda, shoulda, woulda. Be too easy. If you're working on an engine that you're unfamiliar with, you want to make sure you pay attention to how the wiring harness is routed. On this V10, the main harness runs underneath and through the intake manifold. And once it's unbolted and the fuel line is disconnected, I'll tip the intake up and get the wires out of the way. More coolant. With all the boots disconnected from the turbo, we can yank these hot and cold side pipes out of the way because they'll get replaced too. That wasn't the easiest thing to get to. Progress continues on the Viper truck teardown. And the exhaust manifold is next to go followed by the spark plug wires and heat shields. Big miss of spaghetti right there. The valve cover pops off, and I can disconnect the rocker arm assemblies in pairs along with the push rods. A tray like this makes it easy to keep track of the parts and where they came from so you can put them back in the same exact place. Now, it's just a matter of 12 more bolts which hold the heads onto the block. Coolant left in there. Not too much. Give you a hand with that one. Oh, look at that, right in time. Yeah, it looks like you got everything pretty much tore down. Any uh, surprises? Well, yeah, everything came off pretty smoothly, but the only thing I found, the push rods and the rockers are like severely worn, so I'm gonna have to get a new set on the way. Something I didn't account for in the budget, but yeah. I've got plenty left, so I'm not worried about it. You ain't lying, they're pretty ground down hard, huh? You know, from what I can tell, it just looks like the push rod wasn't spinning around, you know, because normally they'll rotate a little bit on their own. So I don't know if it was lack of lubrication or something was out of adjustment or just plain wear and tear. But either way, I can't reuse them, but it's a perfect opportunity for an upgrade. That's all right. I got some surprise ports I got all tubes, tube, so. Well, that's all part of building trucks. So yeah. for me, lifters and cam out, and my teardown is done. Hop to it. The stock lifters are next to go. And the very last thing to come off is the timing set and the camshaft itself. Now you notice that the end of this camshaft is coming fairly close to this crash beam down here. Now we've got just enough room to get it all the way out, but if you happen to be working on a truck that has a Cummins in it, well, you're gonna have to take this crash beam out of the way, or some people, they actually just cut it in half and re-weld it. 
but anything with a longer cam, like a V10 or an inline six cylinder, just be very patient as you wiggle the cam out. It takes a minute, but you'll get it. We're back on the old Ford, and the last thing we gotta do for disassembly is yank off this exhaust. And it turns out I just may have enough budget to even replace these downpipes. After that cross member's out, looks like the rest of this going to the scrapyard. Later. Next, closer to hearing or fire up again. Now it just makes sense to start with installing these fuel injectors on the top end, get that intake back on, close up the intake tubes, that way no dirt and debris gets up in it. Now Summit Racing sent us over these Dietzworks 1700 cc fuel injectors. They're gonna flow about 30% over stock, which will support all the way up to 1,000 horse. And this thing won't be doing anywhere near that, so it'll be no problem at all. And this is the first step of our fuel upgrades with uh, more to come. Now it's always a good idea to grease or lubricate any O-rings pretty much on anything. It goes for seals too. And on this, we're using some synthetic grease, but uh, some good old fashioned motor oil do the trick too. I've got the engine all cleaned up in the SRT10 Ram, which means it's time to install the camshaft that is gonna help me win the muscle truck shootout. Now, from the factory, these engines use a hydraulic roller design camshaft, and we're gonna stick with that. But the cam that I'm going to be installing is made by Comp, and the specs measure in at 218 degrees of duration on the intake and 224 degrees of duration on the exhaust, and is ground with a 114 degree lobe separation angle, which means it's gonna work well in an EFI application like ours. So the only thing we've got to do is apply a little bit of assembly lube to the journals, and we're ready to install it into the block. The reason the camshaft is such a popular upgrade is it lets more air into and out of the cylinders. And when you mix more fuel with that extra air, you get more horsepower. And this is true whether your engine is naturally aspirated or uses forced induction. The head gasket seals combustion pressure inside the engine and keeps it out of the coolant and crankcase and our cylinder head is held into place with some ARP studs, which get torqued in three equal steps to 120 foot-pounds. Next, the headers slide up in from below. We're obviously knee-deep in the build on this little EcoBoost, and since it has a little bit higher mouse, such as just over 130,000, it makes sense to do a quick little tune-up. So MSD sent us over these new coil packs, their OEM replacement, drop right in and provide that reliability and spark we'll be looking for. Ah, I see you literally halfway done, huh? Well, at the moment, I've got a five cylinder engine, which probably has got enough horsepower to take on that little baby turbo EcoBoost you got. I would not disagree there. And I gotta say, dude, those long tube headers, that's what's gonna make this thing. That looks cool. Yeah, you know, when you combine that with a different camshaft, it's absolutely gonna sound amazing. Um, as far as the engine goes, though, I've still gotta get the other cylinder head put together, uh, put the valve springs in it, put the other header on. Um, but from there, I'm waiting on some rocker arms, but I can at least move on to the exhaust. Um, how's the EcoBoost coming? Dude, good. I got the top end kind of sorted out. Uh, I'm about to put it up. Turbo time, man. Turbo time. So are those like the same size or are they smaller than before? Physically same size, slightly bigger, <laughs> slightly bigger on the internals. That's the sound of confidence right there, folks. Yeah. When your engine is operating near its red line, the valves are gonna be opening and closing thousands of times a minute. And there's a lot of mass that's moving around and the valve spring is the only thing that's responsible for pushing the valve, the rocker arm, the push rod, and the lifter back down onto the base circle of the camshaft so it can all be opened back up again the next time the engine turns around. Now, when you install a performance camshaft like we've done here, Oftentimes, the stock valve springs won't be able to keep up with the increased lift and duration that the aftermarket camshaft has. We're going to be installing some Comp 918 Beehive springs that we picked up from Summit Racing, and they are a direct replacement from the stock valve spring. They'll work with the existing keepers and the retainers.
So it's out with the old and in with the new. Summit Racing sent us over a set of Ford Performance Turbos, which are gonna spice things up. Now physically and dimensionally on the outside, they're exactly the same, but it's the inside that counts. These upgraded turbos have a 39 millimeter inducer wheel compared to the old stock 37. Now, I know it's a measly two millimeters, but these little dudes will still support up to 300 horse a piece. You can't really go wrong if you ask me. I've already oiled up, time to squeeze them on in. This turbo setup is quite unique in the fact that it uses oil cooling during operation, and after engine shutdown, it uses thermal passive siphoning, which pulls that coolant in and cools it down nice and slow. This direct fit factory replacement intercooler will increase cooling capacity since we're forcing all that air from these upgraded turbos. You may be a bit surprised to learn that the stock exhaust system on the SRT10 Ram only measures in at two and a half inches, which is a little on the small side, especially considering this truck came with 500 horsepower and we're looking to raise that even further. Now, our long tube header kit actually came with a pair of high flow cats and a mid pipe that's three inches. So all we need is a cat back to complete the installation. And naturally we went to MagnaFlow. This system is made from stainless steel, so we know it'll last a lifetime. And it's specific to the SRT10 Rams as opposed to a regular Ram 1500 because it has the dual exits on the passenger side where there's a nice cutout in the bumper. Now, the muffler is polished so it looks great and it's a straight through design. So it's going to sound even better. And our installation starts up front with the cats. The system easily installs by sliding one pipe into another, and the connections are secured with a band clamp. Finally, the chrome tip fits perfectly in the cutout in the bumper. That little bitty V10 sporting some three inch exhaust. Might as well put it on the EcoBoost. What better way to finish off these turbos than with some stainless three inch high flow cat down pipes and stainless exhaust all the way to the back. Finishing it up with some clean black tips. Now the brakes on the SRT10 Ram are impressive even by today's standards. The rotors measure in at 15 inches and they have massive four piston calipers up front. Now, even so, this truck does have some miles on it, and Austin's F-150 was able to stop in a shorter distance. So, naturally, I've got to upgrade. I went to EBC Brakes and picked up a Stage 9 kit, which comes with some USR slotted rotors, which will help the braking surface run a little bit cooler. And I picked their most aggressive pad, the yellow stuff. Now, together, this will give the truck a 30% improvement in stopping power, and it's a direct bolt and replacement. With this style of caliper, the pads can come out first, and then the caliper unbolts from the spindle, which allows the old disc to be swapped with a USR slotted rotor. And with the caliper back on, the yellow stuff pads slide into their new home. Well, here we are all assembled. JLT Performance helped us finish up this engine bay. We installed this catch can and it'll eliminate all the oil vapors coming from the crankcase before it goes back in that intake tube. Then we wrapped it up nicely with this cold air intake. It fits seamlessly and it's going to feed these turbos all the air they're going to need to make that power. I'm about wrapped up, man. Where are you at? Pretty much in the same boat. I've got the cam in, the header's on, the exhaust is done, and I upgraded the brake. So the truck's just about ready to fire up. All right, so how much money you spent so far? All right, well, I got some notes here. So last time I spent $2,494 on the chassis. Today I spent $5,199 on the engine. 1,158 on the brakes. So that means out of our original 15 grand budget, I've got $6,149 left. How about you? Okay, so last time on suspension alone, I spent $1,890. Today, just on performance parts, in total, $7,315. That leaves me with uh, right at 5,800 left. So we'll be going places. Well, you're definitely gonna need it to take on the SRT, but we can't yeah. finish the day without at least hearing one of these trucks. So let's fire this thing up. Crank this dude up. Okay, bro, I'll give you this one. This thing sounds pretty gnarly. I like it. It is definitely unique. If you guys have any questions about any of the things you saw us build today, check us out at PowerNationTV.com.
Well, we in the home stretch on a muscle truck shootout, and you know what that means. That means you're about to be disappointed by your Ford. Not likely. You do know that style can win over substance, right? Very funny. Well, we've added a whole lot of high performance upgrades to both of these muscle trucks, but I haven't heard this little mouse trap run yet, so why don't you hit it? Time for it. It's louder than before. <laughs> oh, no. You got Oh. Yeah, I don't know about muscle truck there, buddy, but uh, it's, it's loud. I mean, it's more muscly than it was before. Is it though? It's a V6, man, work with what we got. But I did have to wrap up a few little things and that's feeding this bad dude some fuel. The stock fuel pump will support a thousand horsepower as long as it has the voltage to do it. So JMS Chip sent over a fuel max, which basically boosts that stock fuel pump, feeds those injectors all the fuel they need. Now pair that with the pedal max, that'll increase the throttle response and just make this truck fun to drive. Now, I'm no genius, but you're not getting anywhere near a thousand horsepower. I can guarantee you that. Not close, but hey, at least we know it can support it, right? All right, well, today we're talking about appearance. We've done all the mechanical upgrades to both of these rigs, so it's time to make them look better. And on that note, I've actually got to skip town. I'm going down to the powder coater because I got some parts for the SRT that are just finished up. Sweet, my wheels are here, already mounted up. I just got to see if they actually fit and what I'm gonna need to trim. All right, catch you back in a minute. Later. I'm gonna go ahead and say, this is one mighty fine little combo I selected here. We got these black wheels with some slight machine work, and it's just gonna complement the truck really well. Now these are some 22 by 12 drop stars. Picked them up from Summit Racing, they sent them on over, and we got them wrapped in some 30540 or 22 General Grabber UHPs. Now the one thing, we're gonna have an equalizing factor between me and old Lawrence. That's these tires. We're both gonna be rocking the exact same tire and the exact same size. Gotta make things fair, you know? Can't give them too much of a head start. But the unique factor about these wheels is I ordered a negative 44 offset. And what that means is that the wheel is gonna kick out 44 millimeters off the of center, which, if you know anything about it, it's gonna do two things. Push it further to the front when you turn, and as you can see, we're gonna have some rubbing issues. Then, when you crank that wheel the other way, you have the same problem in the back. Now, yeah, you could set up and start doing some crazy measurements and figure all this out. Or you could just take a very well-educated guess like myself, get a little lucky, and just realize you have to cut some things. But I'm okay with that, so let's get to it. Every truck's gonna be a little bit different when it comes to trimming. And you don't wanna really cut more than you need to, so just take it slow, a little bit at a time, and figure it out. Now on this one, I made some clean cuts on these braces hanging off the frame. And I don't even know what this plastic thing is covering this pinch seam, but if I would've known what I know now, I would've done pried it and ripped it off out of the way before I went to cutting and grinding. But eventually I got to that rear pinch seam, cleaned it up, and we in business, baby. Live and learn. Finally get to bolt this tire and wheel up for good. Put this dude on the ground, make sure we got the clearance. I can crank this dude up. See uh, if it rubs. You sure this thing isn't misfiring? Don't worry about that. Sounds kind of hard all the way. Keep going? Keep going. That's it. Money. Ton of room. Gets really close in the back, but doesn't Sorry, I rub, couldn't hear you so. over those motorcycles driving by. What was that? <laughs> Gets really close in the back, but doesn't rub. I think we good. All right, well, that was way too much effort to put a wheel and tire on, but uh, I'm gonna show you how easy it can be. Yeah. 
So instead of running an aftermarket wheel that's way too wide and sticks out so much it makes the truck look like it belongs in a Luke Bryan country music video, I decided to keep things a little bit classier and go with a stock SRT10 Ram wheel. Now these are a 22 by 10, so there's no need to go any wider, but I got these powder coated a dark gunmetal charcoal by the guys at Blast from the Past in Lebanon, Tennessee. Now Austin did mention that we're going to be running the same tire, and these are a 305 40 22, and they're a General Grabber UHP. Now this is an ultra high performance light truck and SUV tire which is going to give both of these trucks great traction and great handling when we're out on the street or even when we do go back to the track. But for now, all I've got to do is get these bolted up. And I know they're going to fit without any sawzall work. Oh, oh that's heavy. Next, the goods go on. Well, it's definitely no mystery where uh, most of my parts budget was spent. <laughs> well, this is kind of cool because it actually shows, you know, different personalities. It shows what your priorities are and uh, what mine are not. Well, I, I'm still making it go faster and more power. It's just style and appearance is a big thing, too. You got to have it all, man. Well, uh, walk us through what you got. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say Summit Racing hooked it up with a package deal on this one. We're going to be rocking a fiberglass hood with some Ram air induction. Feed those turbos, let them breathe some blacked out headlights, LED, and uh, change it up a little bit with a Raptor style grill. And finally, this was kind of a last minute thought, but throwing some flares on it, I think it'll clean it up and give it the stance I want. Well, I am taking a little bit more subtle approach in the visual makeover of the SRT Ram. Basically, I've got two items. I've got a black grill insert, and I've got a pair of headlights that have some kind of black in the background. All I'm really trying to accomplish here is get rid of a lot of that chrome, kind of bring the truck into the 21st century. But uh, <laughs> you are the simplest dude I've ever met. Yeah, who's gonna be winning? There we go. Basically what we got going on is there's these two retaining clips that press into these retainers and it actually sounds like something's breaking, but it's not. Now it is a fairly subtle difference, but having the background of the reflector blacked out, I think makes this truck look a whole lot better. I told you I can't throw. A Ram SRT10 is quite different on the front end from a base model Ram. And two parts that really make it stand out are the Ram air hood and the front bumper and they both have a black mesh grill over the air scoop. But for some reason, the front of the hood got these horizontal chrome slats, and it just doesn't really tie together all that well. Now, we get a lot of our parts from Summit Racing, and they have a lot of aftermarket grills which are pretty flashy, but I didn't want that. So instead, this is something you might not think that Summit carries. I picked up a bone stock replacement grill from a base model Ram. It's made from black plastic. They cost about 12 bucks a piece, so it's not gonna hurt my budget all that much. And it's gonna perfectly tie together the front end of this Ram. But first, I've gotta unbolt the front of the hood so I can get it in. So to zip off the fasteners under this hood, I'm gonna be using this Matco Tools quarter drive 12 volt cordless impact. Now it's compact size makes it great for working under the hood of a vehicle because it gets into a lot of those harder to reach places where a full size impact gun just won't reach. It has a comfortable and ergonomic design and a variable speed trigger, which means it's precise to use. Plus it has a built in LED light to illuminate some of those harder to see areas. Not only that, this thing has 60 pounds of breakaway torque, which means it's one of the more powerful compact tools ever designed. The original grill is held into the shell with these two-part plastic clips. The inner part, or pin, simply pushes through the back side of the clip, and the outer part will just pop right out.
Now, I don't know about you guys, but to me, this $12 per side definitely improves the front end of this truck because this whole 90s billet thing going on, it just doesn't work anymore. So we've got black, it completes the theme on the front end of the truck, and for $24 grand total, I mean, you just can't get any better than that. And it only took me like 10 minutes, and I think Austin's still out there in the paint booth sanding for probably like the 12th hour in a row. Already got all the other parts painted on the truck, and instead of going with the normal body color and color matching everything like I normally would, taking a little chance here, I'm going with gloss black. And I think it'll look pretty cool once everything's thrown together and it'll accent it pretty nice. And I figured, why not throw it on this hood? We got some good body lines here. I'm sure I could find some places, throw some gloss black on here along with that body color. It'll look pretty cool. And uh, well, cleanliness is happiness, so. We're ready to spray. Next, black and emblems without using paint. Back at it on the F-150. And I keep reminding old LT that the muscle trucks build off is not just about performance, it's also about style. We're finishing up here in the booth, laying down some paint, and we'll completely transform the entire look of this truck. And that color matched gray metallic should match the Ford perfectly. Well, I think that's gonna win the style competition right there for $24. I will admit that I am taking a pretty minimalist approach when it comes to doing a visual makeover to this truck, because pretty much the stuff that I care about makes the truck go faster. However, there is one more thing that I want to change on the appearance of this truck, and that's right here on the door. Now, a popular modification is to debadge, which is basically where you peel these letters off, scrape off the adhesive, and buff the door to make it look like they were never there in the first place. But I don't really want to take away from the heritage of the SRT10, and I kind of like the way that the logo looks, except that it's chrome, and I'd much prefer it to be black. Now, I'm going to try a technique that I haven't used before, so we're in this together to find out if it's going to work. Like any paintwork, the job begins by cleaning the surface, but that's where the similarities end. Because I'm using a peelable vinyl coating, I don't have to mask each individual letter. Rather, I'm just leaving a large rectangle exposed around the whole thing. According to the instructions, you're supposed to hit it with a light coat at first, and then several heavier coats. And the more you apply, the easier it should be to peel off later on. Well, I think it is fairly obvious that we have no shortage of parts here, spent a lot of time prepping and a tiny bit of time painting, and got all this stuff done in nice gloss black. And if you ask me, I think it'll look pretty darn good on this charcoal gray truck. Once it's all blacked out, it's gonna contrast really well. After all, this is the muscle truck's build off. Styling and appearance is equal value in points to performance. I'm not saying who's gonna win, I'm just saying I may have the upper hand here. I mean, we got this Raptor style grill gloss black, the bumper black all the way down in the middle and wrapping it up with these flares. It's gonna look pretty cool. Might as well get started by slapping on that old bumper. After popping just a few pieces off, we're gonna swap out this factory doll looking grill. It's easily done by just swapping the inner support over to the new grill, and boom, transformation, baby. And now we finally starting to see it come together, the overall look and stance of this truck. Now, if you remember, we put these 22 inch by 12 inch wide wheels on here with a negative 44 offset. What that did was stick that rubber way past the body line. These factory little skinny flares, well, they're not gonna do anything. And personally, that's a little too much meat sticking out from my likings. Now, if it was off-road or lifted, it would look cool, I'd agree. But with this road tire and the stance we're going for and the muscle truck effect, I'm voting for fender flares. And I'm not even a fender flare kind of guy, but in this application, I think it'll look pretty cool. And you just might be surprised. Well, a nice new shiny emblem means that the build must be about complete, but not even close. I still have a thing or two I wanna to do to this truck and really dial it in and tidy it up. After all, we still gotta get the hood, slap that on, get it outside and see what it actually looks like. 
And uh, I'm not really sure what this fella been up to, but it just proves that anybody could paint anything. After laying down three good coats and following up with a flow coat to let that metallic stand up, we have a good foundation with our first base coat sprayed. When spraying two tones or multiple colors, I would normally spray that accent color first, then mask off and spray that body color for the main base coat. But on this hood and where I choose to put this tape line, it's actually going to be way easier for me to spray that base color first and then use that tape line because we got some weird contours here and spray our accent color later. We'll be in business. Quick and easy. After we get our main color taped off, it's time to lay down about three coats with this accent color. Then we're gonna follow that up with four nice medium wet coats of clear to get this little dude shiny. So who really needs a paint booth and a whole bunch of expensive equipment? For me, a roll of masking tape and a spray bomb is all it takes. Next, did we spend our entire budgets? Find out. We've been out of the booth for a minute and I went ahead and block sanded this whole hood down. Now it's just time to polish it out and find that shine. Using a simple two-step process, I started with the Sonax Profiline Ultimate Cut. Then followed it up with the perfect finish and a soft pad to finally hone in that shine. We use many different Sonax products here in the shop to keep our trucks looking great. Everything from their wheel cleaner, glass cleaner, and even their spray detailer. But they also offer a wide range of products for paint correction as well, like the Profiline EX0406. Now, let's say you've got a truck kind of like the SRT10 here. It's a few years old and it's spent a lot of time in the sun. It doesn't take more than a quick glance to realize this paint doesn't look great. Now, you can use paint correction techniques to kind of restore some of the shine and color to an older paint job, but there is such a thing as too far gone. Now, the sides of this truck, they do look pretty good because they don't get direct sunlight. However, the horizontal surfaces like the hood and a lot of the roof, well, there's not a lot that we can do. If you kind of look here on the edge, you see a lot of these little tiny pits or bubbles. Basically, the clear coat is just starting to separate from the base coat underneath. Now, if you left this thing outside for another couple of years, eventually all the clear coat would basically fall off and turn to dust, and you'd start to see some rust kind of build up underneath here. So really, the only thing that we can do to the top of this truck is repaint, but that's a project for another day. And the hard work pays off. I am truly satisfied with how this hood came out. The clear coat's nice and flat, shining nice and bright, and you can see that gloss and the color truly stand out. But that'll protect the paint. You also want to protect that clear coat, and to do that, we're going to use the Sonax Profiline Polymer Net Shield. Now, unlike a wax that contains oils, this is a polymer-based product. It's a sealant, meaning it'll still have that drip-off effect, still protect the clear coat, it lasts up to six months, and super easy to apply. Really can't go wrong. Just spray it directly on the sponge or on the paint surface, rub it in, and all you gotta do is wipe it off before it's dry. And to extend the life of the sealant, you can use the Brilliant Shine Detailer every six to eight car washes, and it'll put it up there somewhere good to about a year. Make that gloss keep shining and that color keep popping. Well, that pretty much wraps up my build, and it looks like your hood is shiny again, so that's progress, right? Your timing is impeccable, my friend. Wraps up mine, too. Grab that in, and let's get this dude on there, huh? You know, I like the black on this. It kind of gives it like a Shelby vibe. I figured I'd do something a little different instead of just plain jean. Now, you test this before, right? You know it's going to fit? Yeah. It's line up the first time? It's not going to be easy, but it will. I said we'd take them outside so we could actually see what they look like. All right, see if you can keep up. Mm -hmm. 
So this wraps up the build portion of our muscle trucks shootout. And I've got to say, it feels good to get these things out of the shop and into the sunlight so we can finally just take a step back and look at what we've created. For sure, it's always fun to build them, but in my opinion, it's more fun once the build's complete and you can actually see what you accomplish. And I think they're pretty cool. And I'm not gonna lie, I even kind of dig your black emblems. Well, you know what, that's a nice DIY custom touch. And it just illustrates the difference between how these two trucks are built. You've got one over here that's just kind of all about flash and pizzazz. And then you've got one over here, which is all business and muscle. Well, it's all about the dollar, so go ahead and tell me what you spent so far. All right, so we each were given 15 grand to start this build off. And up until this point, I had $6,149 left. The majority of my budget today was spent on the wheels and tires. It cost me 500 bucks to get the wheels powder coated, 815 for the tires, and 199 for the headlights and grill, which means today I spent $1,514 and I've got 4,635 left in the bank. On the F-150, I previously spent $9,200. Today, on tires alone, I spent 815 bucks, the wheels were 1,500, and body mods was $3,100. In total, that's $14,600. That leaves me with just under 400 left in the bank. The next time you see these two trucks, they're gonna be put to the test on the track and there's only gonna be one winner. So until then, we're gonna protect them with these Weather Shield HP truck covers from Covercraft. They're made with a high performance all weather fabric, which means you can use them both indoors and out. It'll allow water to bead off, but the fabric still breathes, so you don't have moisture buildup underneath. Plus, they're a perfect fit. If you have any questions about Covercraft or anything else you've seen in the show today, be sure to check us out at PowerNationTV.com. Question for you, brother. How on earth can you underestimate a pair of twin turbos? Well, it probably has something to do with the fact that they're attached to a teeny tiny V6 that's under the hood of a Ford. Get ready to be sad, my friend. Here we are, the end of the road of the muscle trucks build off. I gotta say, it's been a long journey and we had a good time doing it, but that's not gonna stop today. We still gotta put these trucks through the paces, see who comes out on top. The premise of the shootout is quite simple. We were each given the same exact budget to go out and purchase whatever kind of truck that we wanted. And then we were given another budget to modify them in whichever way we saw fit, to make them both faster and to look better. I couldn't be happier with how my entry into the muscle truck shootout has turned out. And this is a bucket list truck for me. I've wanted to build one of these basically since they came out. It's an 05 Ram SRT10, 505 cubic inch V10 under the hood. And I've accentuated some of the muscle truck vibes that this truck came with from the factory. Powder coated the wheels dark gray and just kind of dressed up the front end and got rid of all that flashy chrome by adding blacked out headlights and a blacked out grill. Like I said, I'm super excited with how this turned out and I can't wait to get it out on the road and onto the dyno and see how she performs. I've said it from the very beginning. It's all about the transformation. And I think I achieved that. This is the 2015 Ford F-150 Platinum sporting the 3.5 liter V6 EcoBoost. Started by slamming it down, getting it a nice wide aggressive stance, putting some good tires and wheels, kick it out with a wide body kit, then we address the performance, adding some bigger turbos, throwing some more air and more fuel in there. Finally, dressed it up with appearance. Raptor style front grille, two-tone Ram intake hood, and then did some gloss black accents such as flares and emblems and, you know, just dress it up and clean it up a bit. Let's hit the road. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, I am so happy to be out on the road in this truck and out of the shop and enjoying it for what it actually is, driving. Driving this dude, that's what it's about. I can tell you right off the back, it handles way better. You know, it's lower to the ground, so you got that center of gravity nice and low. We added that rear sway bar. I, it's tight, it feels good, it handles well, and it's still comfortable, you know? which is important. 
the best way I can describe how the SRT drives is it's just, it's pure, it's raw, it's unfiltered. There's nothing in between your right foot and the acceleration. It's a big displacement, naturally aspirated engine. So it's right there. You put your foot down and it pulls. There's no waiting for the turbos to spool up. There's no electronic throttle pedal that's gonna filter your foot where it's like, ah, maybe you don't really need that much throttle right now. No, on the SRT10, there's a cable between your foot and the engine. So however fast you wanna go, you put your foot there and the truck is simply gonna do it. One thing you need to be careful of though is that right foot we're talking about because this will get you in trouble being behind the wheel of this bright red SRT. As far as the performance goes, well, that's a no-brainer. I mean, these turbos spool up super quick. We push in 18 PSI on the boost. I mean, we got more power. I could feel it. I know it's there. I don't know how much. That's what the dyno is going to tell us. And I'm interested to see really what it's going to put down. I mean, I'm not thinking it's going to do five, 600 horse, which I would love to get out of it, but that's just not realistic for, you know, the mods I did and the budget I had to throw at this. So, you know, anything over 350 will actually be a win in my book. <laughs> I'd be satisfied. So the one thing you might say is missing from my build is the exterior appearance upgrades. Yeah, I know Austin did a whole lot to his truck. Different hood, flares. He honestly transformed how it looks. And this truck, I didn't really want to change much because in my opinion, it already looks better than any F-150 can. Where I just blacked out a few emblems and powder coated the wheels. But in my opinion, my humble opinion I might add, the SRT10 Ram is probably one of the best looking pickups ever to roll off the assembly line. So I didn't want to change anything. I think it already looks perfect. Feel that. 18 PSI on the boost, things rolling. All in all, I'm extremely happy with how this build came out. And I want to see how competitive it's gonna be up to that little cute red truck. I, I think it might be fairly competitive in some areas. You don't need to win them all to win. You just need to win enough. And we'll find out next when the two go head to head on the dyno. Yeah, this is probably one of the coolest sounding trucks that I've ever got to work on, but sound doesn't really get you anywhere down the drag strip. So we started with 430 horse at the tire and about 480 pounds of torque. And it's a pretty simple setup. No, no that's nothing to sneeze at. It's good for a truck, but uh, with headers, cam, and uh, all the stuff you've done, you've done the work, see what it does. All right, well, I'm excited. Yeah, you're right, sound doesn't do anything. And I'm not one to look at stuff on the internet to see what it actually should make. We'll see what it makes. Four sixty-five thirty-five. Not awful. Hey, well, that, that's just burning some stuff off your headers, probably, right? Yeah, something puffed up there pretty good. Oh, yeah. There's oil everywhere. It smells like power steering fluid. And yeah, just as I suspected, <laughs> that weird two-piece fitting decided it wanted not to be together. Well, I mean, if that's the worst that happens, you're in good shape because truck ran fine, but. Holy smokes, that's a, that's a mess. With the mess cleaned up, a new hose installed, and the power steering fluid topped off, I'll make another pull. Made 464 and 511.99 pound-feet. 511 sounds like a good number. Well, 511.99, I'm, I'm calling that 512. I agree, 512 it is. I have another tune with a little bit more ignition timing in it, so I'll get it loaded up into the computer to make another pull. Give it another bang there, see what happens. All right. There we go. Oh, sounds so good. Well, look at that. 473. 521 pound-feet. Now that's a tune-up. That's not bad. I, I ain't gonna lie, that, that's a tune-up. 
I mean, what is that? 40, just about 40 more peak to peak, and I bet if we look, there might be a better gain in the mid-range. Right, no, there, there is. Dude, that's 38 horse peak, but again, that doesn't tell the whole story. All right, well, it's 2020, and they say that's what hindsight is, right? I probably should have gone with a custom ground cam. I did just pick the biggest one that they had available in the catalog, but also, like you said, this is 505 cubic inches, and it's a relatively small cam, but I'm happy with 473, and uh, the true story will be told out on the track. So I got to get this thing unstrapped and hit the road. I like it. Now we've done a lot of mods to help out with the airflow in this low 3.5 EcoBoost, but this truck's got well over 100,000 miles on it, so we might as well address that fuel system as well. We're using Seafoam High Mileage Motor Treatment. It works to minimize long-term wear, but not only does it clean and lubricate the fuel system, you can also add it directly into the engine oil, and that'll help prevent those harmful residues from building up in the crankcase that could restrict oil flow. One ounce of seafoam high mileage per gallon of gas or quart of oil should do the trick. Now, off to the dyno. Well, Pat, it's ready to go. Strapped down and locked in. Now, I liked the red truck when it was on here, but I like the gray maybe a little better. Definitely better, right? Maybe. <laughs> well, all the hard parts are in. The build is complete, my friend. I'm excited to see what this is going to do. Now, with those hard parts, you're going to need a little bit of tuning to make sure those parts do what you want. Exactly. And to do that, we're going to use SCT's X4 Programmer. Now, this device is available for almost any vehicle out there. And if you're running a stock vehicle or even mild performance upgrades, such as an intake or exhaust, it comes with preloaded tunes. And these tunes are dialed in. These guys spend thousands of hours of R&D figuring them out, trying to make these engines run as safely, reliably, and efficiently as possible while still maximizing all your power. Now, the best thing about the device, it is Wi-Fi capable. You don't have to bring it inside. You can do all your live updates in your driveway via Wi-Fi. Then, if your truck throws a check engine light, which they do from time to time, you can read all those DTC codes, figure out what the issue is, and how to resolve it and go from there. It also has other user end options, such as if you're gonna throw bigger tires, that speedo is gonna be way off. You can calibrate that correctly, make sure you're reading the right miles per hour, and then adjust other things such as speed limiter and shift points and so forth. If your bill requires a little more in-depth performance parts, such as ours did, it has the capacity to upload custom tunes from an authorized dealer. That's exactly the route we went. All right, we're all set up. Make a hit. All right. Well, what we at? I'm impressed. 410, 430 for torque. 410. So stock, I think we're at 350? 350s. So I, I'm not going to get my calculator. That's 60 horse right there. 60 at the good. rear wheel. That's pretty nice, actually. Um, I think we're gonna have to make another hit just to see what it does. Yeah, for sure. So. That is 415, 438 pound feet of torque. 415, broke 400. Yeah, not bad. I'll take that. So I heard what sounds like a pair of cats fighting in an old school record player with a big cone on the end. So that must mean your dyno runs over, huh? So how'd the uh, pepper grinder do? Okay, so 415 horse and 438 pound feet of torque. Now that's pretty mean. So there's a lot of different ways we can compare these two results. So uh, how's it stack up, Pat? If you just do strict horsepower per cube. So if you have an, an, yours, which made 474, so you go 474 divided by 505 inches, that is 0 0.09386 per cube. Which yeah. is really good considering there's no artificial atmosphere with a pair of turbos. That is true. But he's got 10 cylinders. That is, but he's got 10 cylinders. But what's really impressive, you got an engine that makes 415 and you divide that by 213 cubic inches, that is literally a staggering 1.948 per cube. That is absolutely impressive, especially on pump gas and something that you can actually drive. I still made more horsepower. I still have a cooler truck, and I think there's a bottle of nitrous around here somewhere, so I'm gonna get back to work. I see he's sweating. He's sweating. He's sweating. Now. He's sweating now. Stay tuned in the coming weeks for when our trucks go head-to-head -to, -head to determine a winner. Speed, agility, styling, and of course, brute force. 
who will come out on top. The time is here, and we're going to lay it all on the line. We got Mark and Tommy to judge which one will win our muscle trucks build off. Here we go. Down the highest number on the chassis dyno is one thing, but muscle trucks are about having fun and mostly doing burnout. So that's exactly what we're gonna do today. And unlike our baseline test where we took them to the road course, ran some laps, today we're drag racing. We're here at US 43 Drag Raceway, and there's no better way to find out a true winner in the eighth mile, give you a nice, precise, and clean result. But before we get to that, just like last time, we're gonna start with a few simple baseline handling tests. So let's get to it. You're gonna need some luck, I think. No such thing. The premise of our muscle truck shootout was simple. Take two iconic American pickups and with a 15 grand budget, build them how we saw fit. I chose a truck I've wanted to build my whole life. This 05 Ram SRT10. 505 cubic inches and 10 cylinders under the hood. I got a lot of flack initially from the muscle trucks crowd with my choice. I went with the 2015 Ford F-150 EcoBoost, and my goal was to transform this low-grade ghost in looks and performance, and obviously, make more power. I concentrated primarily on power, which I improved upon with a hotter cam and some long tube headers. This truck has big displacement, is naturally aspirated, and it's a blast to drive. Yeah! I added an aggressive stance, body kit, and bigger tires and wheels, and upped the performance of the 3.5 EcoBoost with bigger turbos while enhancing the fuel and air delivery. Success. We began our build off months ago by running some cones. We'll start again today to feel what the lower stance does to both of these muscle trucks. just wants to get up and go. There's the radio. Talk to me, Goose. Well, I couldn't tell you if that was good or bad. It didn't uh, look good, no. Uh, I was too distracted by the sound of this glorious engine. <laughs> right? No, uh, I mean, honestly, it doesn't feel much different than before, because really? all I really did was lower it down. Obviously, the tires were a little more sticky. But, yeah. I mean, it looks like it didn't have a whole great deal of body roll, but then again, I think if we'd have the cones a little tighter, which we're probably supposed to, we'd be able to get into it a little more. All right, well, that's what we got. It's just for fun. Let's do yeah, another one. Exactly. Oh, I love the sound of the V10. Can't really get into it too much because. They're kind of spaced out, but. I don't know, I mean, it's a truck, right? You didn't hit a cone. <laughs> That's good. Um, I, I don't really know how to judge this compared to where we started from. It feels pretty close. That's all it's really about. Does it feel better? Does it feel like it's tighter? Doesn't roll as much, handles firmer? Put it this way, it certainly doesn't feel worse. I think it's a little bit better, but. Dude, agree? Yeah, I don't know. Just more. Let's go. Well, what'd you think? Handles a lot better. It's super tight. I think it rolls way less, but I think we're going a little fast. <laughs> All right, well, give it another shot. Let's see what I you do. I didn't hit a cone. That's... Roughly how fast you think you're going. Uh, I didn't even look, dude. I don't know. I'll look this stuff. Yeah, pay attention to see if you, I mean, yeah. I don't know what is supposed to be fast. Me we either. got them spaced at 80 feet. I don't think that's regulation or I anything. I think it's but... 60 is supposed to be. Ah, tomato, tomato. All right, hit it again.
Now, you kick my cone over? Now here's the thing. Remember, this is a budget, right? A yeah. GoPro costs about three or 400 bucks, so. Did I hit the GoPro? Oh. We're gonna add that to your budget. <laughs> this guy, I swear, can never win. Next, Tommy and Mark are our judges when the trucks go head to head. Consistent little truck, but I'm not surprised. We're back on Truck Tech at one of our local drag strips, where it's judgment day for my F-150 EcoBoost and OLT's SRT-10 Viper. I know both of us are kind of a fan of the two trucks. I'm a Dodge guy and you're a Ford guy. You can't have a muscle truck build off without an eventual winner. And you can't declare a winner without judges. So Austin and I enlisted the help of Detroit Muscle's dynamic duo. Tommy and Mark are gonna spend some time with us out at the track. Obvious he spends them on the outside of this thing. Do you like what he did? <laughs> yes. Really? You know, it definitely has a modern feel to it. And with one of these trucks. You don't normally see these guys working on pickup trucks, but they are high performance experts in their own right. You name it, they've built it. Everything from high dollar Mopar resto mods to big block Mercs and turbo crown Vicks. These guys know what's cool. But fashion police? What the heck were you thinking, man? Not so much. Hey, Hoss, it's a great day here at the track, and I hope you're going to drive this thing like you got something to prove. Well, that throttle pedal, it does go all the way to the ground, and I'm pretty much going to just keep it right there. Well, I hope so, man, because, you know, I'm a big Mopar fan, and that other over there is far from it. So you better be on the lead side of this thing. Well, I'll do everything in my power, but hey, since you're a judge and all, I've got like, I don't know, 75 bucks in my pocket. Maybe, maybe, I'm just saying that could sway your decision. 75 bucks. I guess it could be a deposit. I tell you, you nailed the look. Why, thank you, buddy. Not a lowered kind of guy, but. Hey, I'll be honest, me either. This is way out of my comfort zone, but it's I'm taking risk, taking chances, and it turned out all right. Yeah, you were on a budget, so. I was. I think you spent it well. Almost ran out of budget. I'm sure. <laughs> now I'm a blue oval guy, so I mean I'm kind of partial to it. I have to admit, but I I do like the stance. I like the fact that you went with the wide wheels. Hey, you were there when I first bought this thing, right? Yeah. Grandpa truck. Oh, it was perfect the way it was. Transformed, you'd say? It's more perfect now. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Now like let's it. just see if it performs. I want to see that. Yeah. Then hopefully. we'll see. All right, guys, so the fate of the shootout is in your hands, and we've got five categories for you to judge these trucks on. The first one, you got dyno results. The results are in here. Pat tallied everything up, and there's three separate listings. We've got total horsepower, we've got horsepower per cube, and then finally, we've got percent of horsepower increase. And we did not look at that yet, so it's all on you. I wonder if there's a check in here. That'd be pretty sweet <laughs> coming from one of you guys. That Possibly. Just saying. It's a sealed envelope. You never know. I'm just saying, look inside of it. The very next category is performance out on the strip. So you're talking eighth mile drag strip, right? Yep, eighth mile, you've got ET and mile per hour. You just kind of split your points between the two. Hmm. Then right after the strip, we're coming out on the paddock, freestyle burnouts, totally subjective. Did any one of y'all bring some tires? Because if you're gonna need some points, you're probably gonna have to use up the backside of these things. Well, we've got a spare set each, so we're covered there. Yeah, we thought ahead. Might not need them, but we might. You better. Then obviously, since you've been looking at the trucks all day, it just makes sense. The next category is styling and appearance. Totally subjective, whatever you think's better. You think we can handle this? I think we got it. Is that it? Nope, there's one more. The very last category is money well spent. We were each given the same exact budget, so it's up to you guys to figure out how we utilized our money. AKA utilization of funds. We did a better job. Bank Either way, buck. that yep. money's gonna get spent this afternoon when we're celebrating. <laughs> That's what I have to say. All right, well, uh, the track is open, so let's get to it. Cool. Dude, it did not shift for Okay, so a trial and error kind of situation here. 10.73. Dude, it don't count, obviously. This is the eighth, not the quarter. Otherwise, that would I, be a good number. I thought it was the mile. <laughs> 
Dude, yeah, it broke loose right before pre-station. I was like, oh, let off, and then I couldn't. I didn't have enough time to kick it in four. And don't do a burnout on the starting line this time. Ah, I'm gonna try not to. Later on, we're roped into a tug of war for all the marbles. No way, no way. Well, he, he's improving. I mean, that's all you can ask for after watching that first run. Truck looked like it liked it out there. I mean, it's, it's making a good run, it's just, Really what it boils down to is how is it going to do against the other truck. That's really what matters. He definitely could improve the ET, but the mile per hour was pretty decent. I'm not super worried, but I think we can pull this off. Now, I think he just got disqualified, actually, for doing that big of a burnout. What are my numbers? Oh, uh, you're not fast enough yet. Not fast enough, okay. Fast enough. You're getting there. Good thing is you got two more runs. Two more, what are the numbers though? I'm not gonna tell you. I want it Come to be on. a surprise. I'm really not gonna tell you. Did I do better than Austin? I'm not gonna tell you, because if I tell you yes, you might not try as hard. That's fair. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to do quite the burnout, maybe about a quarter of the amount, <laughs> but other than that, it looked pretty good. All right, well, let's do it again. Let's see it. Now he's lining up to do a burnout, and the one he did just a moment ago was tremendous. That's good, come on out of there. See, that's about all he needs. It's plentiful and effective. Now let's see if he goes any faster. Okay, so now that I've successfully turned my back tires into goo, I've gotta to try to make a pass and make them stick. It may be a challenge, but that's all right. Boom, 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 great. Oh yeah, dead hook. Those cow tracks are working great. Oh yeah, she's pulling good. Love the sound of that V10. Second run, consistent little truck. So far, you know, quicker than the EcoBoost, but I'm not surprised. I got some good news. What's that? You were faster on this one. All right. Not necessarily mile per hour, but there's still room for improvement. Well, on that one, I actually flat-footed it off the line. I didn't like break, yep. I can't say break boost it because it's not a diesel, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I just flat-footed it. This time I'll probably get up against the converter a little bit. Maybe I get a little better 60 foot, a little better ET. Whenever you're going yeah. through the traps at the end of it, can you hold it back a gear and let it run harder through it? Yeah. Is it shifting? Yeah, it shifts right at the line, so I'll yeah, try that. Bring it out a little tighter. Cool. All right, brother. One more. I don't think he has any idea what his score is. All I hope is this third run is faster than the first two. Well, I feel like that's about as good as it's gonna get. Well, technically, you were slower on the third than the second one. Okay. But. Still faster time. than somebody we know. Really? Ooh. Me? You're consistent. Okay, so <laughs> what were your numbers? You were in mid? I think my best was like a 9.6 at 77. Okay. Mm -hmm. Your quickest was 9.11? 9, 11. nine yeah. Right. That's Oops. 79. Nine. 79. Never broke 80. Load it up a little bit, see what happens. Well, I'll try. I mean, I could try one more, but I felt like I was almost on that verge of breaking yeah. the tires loose. I think, honestly, loading it is worse on it. Yeah. You just need to shock it and let it roll. Three, two, one, go. Oh, we spun a little bit, not too bad. Come on, truck! So, as far as I can tell, that's supposed to be like the best of both worlds. Didn't load the converter, held it second gear. How do we do? A lot better. Really? You almost got into the eight. It was really? 903. And what mile per hour? 79. Yeah. All right, well, I'll take it. That's it. Almost one for the books. Cool, brother. 
I don't know what to do now. I've already won. That's good. That's good. <laughs> this is your last one. You got to be as fast as you can. Yeah, I know. I'm not going to load it this time. Austin wasn't satisfied with his slow four, so I figured we'll give him one more shot. Next, the scores are tallied and a winner declared. But not before a little heads up action. Whoever's standing back here is going to have a hard time telling the difference from my tail lights in your pretty red truck. All right, well, see if you can keep up. Yeah. Hey, will that little six cylinder even do a burnout? I don't know. Before we have Tommy and Mark add up the scores, a little head to head for bragging rights is a good way to go out. How's that for burnout? I don't know, it sounded like there was a little six cylinder Honda running next to me or something. Hey, so no joke, these trucks are close. I know, I'm, I've been impressed, honestly, like for real talk, I've been impressed with that truck. Still not as fast as the SRT, even though it's 10 years older, but it's still okay. Whoever's standing back here is gonna have a hard time telling the difference from my tail lights in your pretty red truck. All right, well, see if you can keep up. Yeah. Stage, stage, here we go. Oh yeah, oh yeah, let's roll, baby. Oh, feels good. Come on, come on. I think we got it. Give it a juice, give it a juice. <laughs> I think we got it. Yeah, yeah, you may have got me head to head, but overall, I know I beat you in a few categories and we left it up to Tommy and Mark to score both trucks how they saw fit. Well, I guess it's about time for us to tally up all of our totals to see which one of these boys is gonna take the cake. That's right, and what's great about this for us is it's all subjective, so we get to decide the winner, even this first category, which is dyno performance. It wasn't much of a contest here. With all the engine mods added to the Ram, it only gained a measly 39 horsepower. Austin's truck, on the other hand, gained 65 horses for an 18.5% gain. Compared to LT's, 8.9. We scored it 14 and a half points to 10 in favor of the Ford. Well, the next category is styling and appearance. And I'd have to say, in my opinion, one of them did a really good job. He swung for the fence and knocked it out of the park. Still going. The Dodge had basically no exterior upgrades, but we still gave LT five points each because he bought a truck that was already styling from the factory. Agreed, and no question, Austin hit a home run. Stance, body mods, wheels, tires, everything. Because it's such a good looking ride, we gave him an 18 out of a possible 20 points. LT clearly won the drag competition 20 to nothing. Doesn't matter the trucks were only two tenths apart. When it comes down to a drag race, it's all about the power and getting it to the ground. LT's truck was just quicker and faster. And finally, money well spent. Like the styling category, this wasn't even a fair comparison and we scored it 18 to two for the EcoBoost. The fact that Austin spent nearly all of his budget to come up with a badass truck that looks great and performs well, says a lot. And what was LT thinking? Leaving nearly a third of his budget on the table. I'd spend that on a few more things to up the styling and performance. Well, after tallying everything all up, I have to say it got pretty close. Yeah, I mean, the Ford scored 50.5. I don't know who gave him a half point. What do you mean? And the Dodge ended up with 52. It's pretty close. Mm -hmm. Well, I was trying to keep it accurate. That's why I was in that half a point. So what do you think, guys? We got any results yet? Oh, we've got some results. And after tallying them up, they're dangerously close, guys. Well, we still have burnouts to do, right? Yeah, but we've got a little problem with that because it's obvious that that big red Mopar is going to shred the tires and the yeah. Ford. Yeah, yeah. it's going to try. We've so, got a better plan. Let's call it the gauntlet. I'm in. I don't know what it is, but I'm in. When I say gauntlet, I mean it's the classic battle between two pickup trucks. It's the ultimate measuring stick, the tug of war. Now, the rules are simple. These trucks are hooked up. The first one that the bumper crosses the yellow line is the loser, not only of this portion of the competition, but the whole shebang. It's gonna be awesome. All right, boys, y'all ready to go? Three, two, one, go! Oh, no way, no way, no way! You can stop, you can no stop! Way. <laughs> Come on, 
man. <laughs> All right, shut it down. I mean, I can't believe that happened. No, sir. I thought for sure that the F-150 was going to win. Yeah, me too, just because of the, I figured that one was going to blow the tires off of it, and it was basically going to walk a dog. This guy, I didn't know this was a braking contest. I thought we eliminated the braking contest. Um, if you'll notice, there was no braking. We moved that way. What about four-wheel drive? Didn't you even use it? I didn't start out in it because I wanted to give you a fighting chance. Well, you did, and I won. <laughs> Right? That's it? I won? I thought we were that playing was the rules, fair. right? He was going to murder you in the burnout competition. Hey, man, I was just being, you know. Well, if fair. according to the judges, the winner of that contest took the whole thing, so. You took won. the whole thing. It's over. It's over. All right. We're done. That win? Tell you what. But I will say, both trucks are awesome. Yes, sir. Way. Yes, sir. I will say we're starting out pulling a four-wheel drive right now. <laughs> Rematch, he says. I'm going well, home. I mean, I'm staying here to watch this. Come on, fellas. Want to see in detail what went into each of our muscle truck builds? Come on, baby. This really proves nothing other than it makes a lot of smoke. Check us out at PowerNationTV.com. Come on.